Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you again to our Energy Forum 2021, which this year is a YouTube channel and a YouTube cluster. Uh, the Energy Forum is powered by green local en energy producer Enifit and is organized by Estonian Chamber of Commerce of Lithuania, uh, Polish Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce, and Primus Law Firm, as well as supported by our dear partners, the Estonian Embassy and Polish Embassy as well as other, other partners that are also very important for this project. This year, uh, I'm your host, uh, Robert Jotka, as usual. And uh, this year we have been talking about uh, gas and uh, gas prices and gas markets a lot. Also, we have covered some issues about renewables and uh, related topics. And today we are talking about electricity. Electricity is also obviously the main energy source of today and uh, the importance of electricity is growing day by day. Uh, the prices of electricity are growing day by day as well, as we can see, especially in the European region and in uh, Western Europe especially. We will cover that in a bit detailed uh, in a few seconds. But uh, uh, today we will try to cover not only the ongoing tactical issues of electricity prices, but uh, also strategic issues in connection to electricity network developments and synchronization of the Baltic electricity systems of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia with Western Europe. And for this topic, we have a renowned expert, Mr. Lutaros Faranavičius, who is the head of the strategy department at LitGrid. Uh, and LitGrid is uh, the uh, transmission system operator of uh, Lithuania, the national transmission system operator. Uh, obviously, LitGrid is responsible for synchronization of, uh, of the networks uh, of Lithuania and uh, indirectly Latvia and Estonia uh, with, with Western Europe because the networks will be synchronized through two uh, main uh, cables, the existing onshore cable Litpolink and uh, the, the, the to be constructed uh, undersea subsea cable Harmonlink. Uh, both of these uh, links are uh, connecting the Baltic countries with Poland and, and will supplement the existing uh, energy connections to Sweden and, and Finland. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to the Taurus and uh, ask, uh, ask the first question. Uh, well, uh, before our, our meeting here today, before we joined in line, uh, we discussed that the electricity prices are soaring. And uh, in fact, uh, if to uh, check the latest data, uh, today's market price of electricity in Germany, for example, is 302 euros per megawatt hour. In uh, UK, it's even 320 euros per megawatt hour. In Lithuania, it's a bit better. It's about 220 euros. Uh, Estonia is 178, Poland 141. But again, if you compare that to the prices of, let's say, a few months ago, even or a half a year ago, a year ago, so the the the, the rise has been astronomical. Essentially, it has been like several hundred percent of, of, of electricity price rise. So, what 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 is the reason of that? You know, and uh, how will how long will it last? I mean, is it a new normal, or will we come back to the normal electricity prices that we were used to? All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Robert, for uh, inviting me to this forum. It's my pleasure to uh, participate in discussion with you, and uh, maybe we will receive some questions from our attendees today. So uh, thanks for the question. It's a very wide question, and it's difficult to answer because there are uh, different uh, positions I can talk about, uh, and one is my personal experience, not representing Litgrid as a company, but as, uh, as a consumer and uh, about uh, end prices. Uh, just because I switched uh, my uh, provider to uh, in the liberalized market already in Lithuania, uh, I start receiving uh, double uh, electricity bills compared to six uh, months ago. That's really unfortunate, but uh, still uh, uh, some part of Lithuania cannot feel it yet because it's still not fully liberalized market, but it's coming so fast and it's the one, one, one next step of, uh, according to our government. So 
it, mi it might uh, affect very soon, maybe from 1st of January, many more people. So uh, from this perspective, that is unfortunate, of course, uh, unfortunate because we are a big part, we are members of a big, big uh, uh, wholesale uh, market in Europe. And that was, uh, and now I'm taking the stance of Lidgrid uh, for a moment, and uh, from Lidgrid's perspective, um, uh, creation of fully integrated uh, one electricity market uh, was the goal of the whole European Union, because previously all markets were divided. There was a lot of different markets in, in Europe uh, not connected, and uh, uh, not connected markets are good until they are cheap, but sometimes it's better to connect because you can uh, exchange cheaper electricity with uh, more expensive areas, so called bidding zones. So, what Lithuania did, constructed infrastructure with uh, Sweden and accessed immediately from the first day. 35% lower electricity prices uh, from Nordic countries. So uh, uh, this, what is happening now in Europe with electricity prices is the best example of almost fully integrated uh, uh, electricity market. Uh, you can observe very strange uh, uh, situation in Poland. Poland is not as sensitive to to electricity uh, 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 changes, uh, price changes yet, but it will more and more with every day as well. So, uh, uh, so those are two different approaches I talked about. One is personal, one is from lead grid. Uh, third could be from uh, maybe uh, sensitive so society members, which are of course the most important for us. To protect, and I think both should be somehow protected in Lithuania and in Europe uh, because uh, they cannot handle it themselves. It's too big a uh, uh, problem for them. So, uh, uh, to my knowledge, uh, from media, European Commission is creating toolbox, toolbox, uh, standardized uh, tools uh, for all European members to use not to start uh, you know ruining what we've created for 10 years by unilateral national actions one country doing this another that so i think uh, uh, this standardized toolbox i hope will be used by all member states first of all secondly i hope it will be uh, effective enough you know to 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 handle this until until it will uh, be resolved. So getting back to the essence of your question, what are the reasons? The reasons are gas prices, CO2 prices, but uh, 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 those are the major effects. Some say that maybe uh, uh, those big generators who are currently acting in the European market are making uh, benefit out of this situation because if you can sell electricity for 300 per megawatt hour, then your costs are half or triple less, it's a fantastic opportunity to take your benefits out of the situation. But uh, I'm not taking stance on this uh, at all. I think uh, uh, what we can uh, conclude is that uh, gas prices, if you look into the future uh, market, uh, is not yet going down. So there are no signals yet that the prices will soon go down unless those uh, uh, interventions by European Commission and member states will be effective enough to protect uh, by taking additional measures. But if we keep it uh, for the market only, I don't think in the upcoming six months the prices will uh, go down. But Robert, why always we discuss about problem only when it occurs, but why we don't discuss when we enjoy cheap prices. So, you know, the true market is when one period, the prices are very cheap, we enjoyed period of 35 euros per megawatt hour, even sometimes close to zero. And that was fantastic. And that was the benefits of integrated market. So we enjoyed this period. Now we unfortunately have to handle this high price period, but uh, it will go down. It's like a roller coaster. It's, it, it would be boring to go flat, you know? So we go up and down, up and down. But 
the trend according to our prognosis as general for 10 years in the future, then we uh, in LitGrid uh, do market modeling. Uh, the trend of the prices is up, but not double or triple, <laughs> slightly up. Uh, so this, uh, what's happening now, should be taken uh, as uh, temporary, uh, maybe not uh, uh, as fast changing as we would expect, but I think it will go down uh, sooner or later. Anyway, so. Well, obviously, it's it's all about demand and supply. So, 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 in fact, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, when 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 the prices go up, you know, new. Uh, supply elements uh, kick in, and and obviously that will regulate the market sooner or later, as as, as you very correctly pointed out. But obviously, uh, <laughs> the, the the people are like this that that everybody is 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 concerned about the problem when it occurs. You know, nobody expects it to to come, and uh, that's that that is where we come to the strategy of development of uh, electricity networks, of uh, interconnectors, of uh, renewable energy sources. And, and that is also the strategic issue and strategic goal of, of LibGrid as the national TSO to ensure, you know, stability of the system and, and uh, uh, uninterrupted supply of electricity, you know, and, and the meeting of, of peak demands and, and solving the off, off peak demand, you know, electricity distribution issues, uh, the transmission issues. So. So, in fact, uh, I know you have a presentation about the uh, lead grid strategy and, and uh, the, you know, long term views, what the lead grid is planning to do in, in this area. So, so I would be very interested to hear it and, and you know, please. Yes. And let me try to share it with you and. Uh, Please approve that you can see it in full screen and then I will proceed. Yes, I see it with your screen, so it's not, full. yes, now I see it full screen. All right, good. Uh, so I have uh, 15 slides maybe for our panel. It will help uh, also discuss a little bit, maybe Robert, because we are flexible in the format, we can, uh, you know, make it as uh, really when I do presentations with your uh, questions on the spot, you know, maybe you will find something interesting okay. in my slides and maybe you want to add uh, something to what I'm saying. So, uh, first of all, Lidgrid is doing the major, major mega project, which is called Baltic State Synchronization with uh, Continental Europe. So, this slide indicates how many projects we do. Uh, in Lithuania only, of course, Latvians, Estonians, Poland is also doing their part. 14 projects uh, we initiated, some are smaller, some are bigger. Uh, biggest one could be Harmony Link, the DC cable from Klaipeda to or Berbiene to Poland with uh, CapEx investment up to 700 million euros. So trust me, it's just one project out of 14, but it's uh, uh, so big that it's uh, and so important that uh, I have to mention it. Also, we do, for example, synchronous compensators uh, in three places in Lithuania. We have. So, uh, not to go too deep into synchronization, we are on the right track. We are on time. We already completed three out of 14 projects. So, the major goal to disconnect to cut, you can see the scissors here on uh, Belarus and on Kaliningrad borders, to cut physically the lines and to disconnect from Russia and Belarus is achievable and uh, it's a uh, in co coordinated matter this ongoing project uh, we are doing so that is a big 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 challenge for us as a company and uh, of course uh, the priority number one from an energy perspective for uh, us as a region to disconnect from russian system and to connect to european system but the uh, future is changing and uh, Context is changing. We know that technologies are developing. Globalization is more and more impacting us. We just discussed the market, integrated market effects on Lithuania. Then we are so small compared to Swedish or Nordic market that we don't decide on what price will be, but uh, bigger countries does. So globalization is taking effect. Of course, environmental protection is uh, next to us every day. We have to take care and make actions ourselves. So. Uh, uh, data uh, is more and more uh, into our daily actions, 
in uh, our decision making uh, has to be data driven uh, business is made on data so uh, uh, of course security of supply we have to continuously ensure as a company because you know we have a joke in Litgrid that uh, we get remembered our name got get to remember only when electricity is off you know so that is a disappointment for us we hope uh, you know to have to be in contact uh, even when it's on but but security of supply is our major uh, duty to take care so both challenges brings us to our new strategy which Lidgrid published officially two days ago and please take a look at the <coughs> Lidgrid website you can find it in full scope it's very interesting to read and i'm really proud together with our company and uh, our group G group uh, that we deliver new strategy and we introduced big changes to our 10 years development and i want to share it with you today i think it's uh, something of uh, extraordinary first of all we change our view to ourselves First of all, we put in the center a slogan, so-called exchange platform. That's how we, in the future, identify ourselves in Bitgrid. We uh, want to become uh, uh, enablers, the possibility uh, unlockers, the makers for all related parties acting around us. We should not be this uh, uh, boring, uh, electricity high voltage transmission operator from generator to uh, uh, distribution uh, network. We want to enable many more parties interact uh, constantly with each other with our help. We should enable that. So you can see in the white circle around it, around the exchange platform, our five related major parties. So of course, it's our fine founder, the ministry and the EPSOG group. Of course, it's uh, our society, uh, which we are uh, impacting by uh, developing the grid. Uh, it's our partners, producers, suppliers, uh, our users, which use electricity. And finally, it's us uh, in the company, 350 employees. So those uh, five related parties we want uh, to enable to uh, through us to exchange the possibilities, technical, commercial, or value creation both uh, we want to enable and i will tell you about three changes which we introducing in our strategy to 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 achieve this so uh, uh, not to forget uh, electricity is and will be needed more and more we know uh, electricity transformation in transport sector in other sectors so this uh, forecast for 2030 <laughs> maybe it's even too small currently we are uh, consuming as a country 11 terawatt hours we prognose 15 but in some countries they say but uh, that by 2030 it will be double from today so imagine even 22 terawatt hours is a possibility if uh, this progress of electrification will speed up so um, here is one of the most important uh, slides in my presentation because here publicly we announce our commitments to five related parties you can see it on the right side for each party we commit in 2030 to focus on consumer expectations and deliver innovations that is one for producers to become a desirable partner deliver flexible services and uh, reliable infrastructure for society to uh, obviously act socially responsible and constantly reduce uh, negative impact of our activities towards environment to founder uh, to develop value but in a sustainable way not you know for uh, whatever price sustainability is very important here in creation of value and for each other, we uh, promise in 10 years to be recognized professionals. So I hope we are already in Lithuania, but to be in Europe, uh, to be one of the most desired employers in Lithuania. So those five public statements, or we call it commitments from Lidgrid, is our promise to our five related uh, uh, parties. 
And you, from today, uh, whichever party you represent, have a right towards us as a company to constantly remind us, Lutaurus, Lidgrid, I am representative from users. Please deliver more and more on what you just promised publicly to uh, focus on my, as a consumer, expectations. So uh, that is big, big shifts we are uh, delivering here in those five simplified messages. So uh, uh, let's talk now a little bit about uh, uh, new trends and where we put our priorities for upcoming 10 years. So sustainability, obviously we understand that it's uh, going more and more into uh, renewables. Even synchronization, our investments, 2 billion euros in four countries is uh, contributing, it's uh, synergizing with uh, renewables because, uh, for example, synchronous condensers uh, on the second part here on the picture will strongly uh, support the integration of renewables. For example, Harmony Link also, which is necessity for synchronization, is uh, will unlock 1000 megawatt of offshore in Poland and so on. Batteries, which are, of course, uh, delivered by another company, Energy Cells, but still, it will help, all those projects will help uh, with renewables integration. So it means that we, by doing first steps into different mega projects, such as synchronization, already contributing uh, towards the renewable goals. That is fantastic news because we 75% covered some of the costs from, from European funds. So by doing one, we in fact synergizing in, in two goals. Uh, we identified 1000 megawatts of additional onshore generation uh, possibilities to be connected after 2025. One small disclaimer for that purpose, of course, uh, developers have to pay for those lines to be connected unless uh, legal acts would be changed and Lithuania would decide to uh, do it on behalf of a uh, um, state uh, towards developers. But anyway, we found a possibility to uh, develop even more uh, onshore uh, uh, wind uh, in uh, uh, Lithuania after 2025. But when you take it to the light side, uh, you will realize how big and fast the change is already ongoing. By 2025, we will have wind capacities of 1,200 onshore only, and now we have only 500, so it's more than double, you know, some generation will speed up. And uh, after, uh, uh, after 2030, even before 2030, offshore will kick in. Offshore, you know, there is a very, very serious project in Lithuania about first stage, marked here in this uh, uh, orange color in the sea, 30 kilometers from Derbeni, uh, 700 megawatts compared to, you know, uh, I don't know, biggest uh, generator unit uh, in Electrena, it's only 450 or, or nuclear even, uh, you know, it's uh, 1000. So one on the stage will deliver 700 and uh, uh, Lithuania is already energy ministry thinking and planning for unlocking the full potential of, of, of offshore, which means that maybe even stage two uh, soon will be announced. And overall capacity is uh, more than three and a half gigawatts. So this uh, blue area marked in square. So, so uh, both uh, changes are coming and we as Lidgrid, of course, are in the front line to deliver this. So um, one more thing is uh, after we will deliver Harmony Link, we have a few options how to enable this offshore grid development. And one of the options is to unlock it by using new technologies, such as uh, hub to shore HVDC uh, technologies. So on the red picture, on the right picture in red, you see possibilities for us maybe in the future to uh, use the newly built uh, Nordbalt, newly built Harmony Link for the purpose of connecting both together with offshore wind. So a lot of changes is coming. We are considering it into our uh, plan. So uh, as I mentioned, the environmental impact is of one of the three uh, major uh, priorities for us. And it is in our strategy 
you can find even uh, year by year our roadmap towards uh, reducing the environmental impact and this uh, CO2 uh, mark as a company. So we aim to uh, reduce it more and more by changing our behavior, by contributing to the society, by enabling renewable uh, electricity integration. Second big transformation in lead grid is digital transformation. We want to become uh, open data. We want to become uh, partners, enabling uh, our partners to use uh, data for their uh, value creation. So we hope to integrate more and more uh, our consumers and our partners IT systems into one uh, joint uh, system to uh, faster and more effective uh, cooperate in, in projects delivery and so on. Also, we want to become a data-driven organization and to create a, a data-driven ecosystem. So first steps in the very few years, next years, will be opening of our own data, which is not very sensitive for uh, market participants, maybe traders, maybe others who want to use this data to create additional services to the market and maybe uh, create value by doing that. And uh, third uh, change, the uh, last priority in BitGrid we are delivering with our new strategies orientation to our client. And we used to be big monopoly transmission system operator dictating the needs, you know, we want to face more and more our partners, our clients, our users, and producers and uh, uh, traders in a dialogue uh, with each other. So we want uh, to step in to jointly uh, uh, propose market possibilities, transparency, speed of our service if it's needed for our clients, you know, by and this would uh, unlock and create value for our uh, partners. So main results uh, for stakeholders, I will unlock the whole roadmap here. This is, I think, the last slide from me is uh, to go towards 2030, of course, in 2025, deliver uh, synchronization in 2027 to enable the first offshore wind uh, farm integration into the Lithuanian grid on the way to do uh, more even projects, which I did not mention yet, which is related to systems integration of gas and electricity systems in exchanging those elements into one joint system. You know, Europe is starting to talk about hydrogen as a product from renewables. So uh, lots of changes will be delivered through this uh, through this uh, new strategy of lead grid. So I will, I think, stop here. Our uh, path we choose is sustainability, digital transformation, client orientation. And of course, we realize that success of our new strategy is based on uh, cooperation. So we do invite our partners to do that. So thanks, Robert, for uh, letting me share uh, our new vision. It's a big honor I'm representing uh, uh, competent center and uh, lead grid uh, uh, professional. So uh, I hope now it will contribute to our further dialogue. Great, Lutaurus. I mean, indeed, it was a very interesting presentation, and and even myself, I learned many new things. You know, it's it's really a remarkable, you know, transformation in the vision of the lead grid as, as SDTSO. I mean, and, and obviously, yes, you are you are becoming rather a. A, a hub for for information exchange, uh, not, not only electricity exchange, you know. So, and this is this is something totally totally new and totally, I would say, even unexpected for an uh, average consumer and average user of electricity. That that you know, a, a electricity transmission system operator can trade in data actually as 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 a resource. Uh, or, or allow others to use it for trade. Yes, maybe we won't sell our data because it's our consumer's data. We have to make a strategy on this, but our goal is not you know, to, to sell every bit and piece of uh, what we own, but instead is to allow access if we have it and if it's uh, available for others to, you know. As, uh, accumulate some, some. Accumulate and create value, exactly, yes. yes. Well, that's really great. 
and obviously you you, you mentioned um, uh, you know several big projects you know the ongoing synchronization and uh, then the development of offshore wind uh, in, in connection and also strengthening of, of the system but um, again you know uh, coming coming let's say so from the uh, from the clouds of, 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 of energy people talk you know so what is the benefit of synchronization to consumers to business to mm -hmm. electricity users you know mm -hmm. why why it's needed generally speaking uh, okay simply speaking uh, because uh, we will uh, all of us will be uh, electrically speaking uh, observing the standards and rules of europe not of uh, historically, since 1950s, uh, Russian and Belarusian joint electricity system. So, uh, if we invite investors to our country, please invest, you know, hundreds of millions into data center or something like this. We usually do investigation, and if we check and we see Lithuania, European Union, uh, is still electrically a member of Russia and Belarus, what does it mean for me as an investor? How reliable their system is and how reliable their system be in the future? And, you know, maybe it's uh, pretty much reliable now, but who can guarantee that future is the same standard, you know? Uh, we can see this geopolitical uh, effects of uh, Russia and other big countries. Uh, so, there is no guarantee and we have to ensure uh, this guarantee to our investors and to our society as well because you know uh, one day we have light but one day in five or ten years when we won't have a light every member of society will ask them what have you done to change from russian system to to european you know so simply speaking this is the the uh, standard we jointly have with our partners in Poland and in Europe. In Europe, we have regulations, directives, and we know how uh, system electricity system is managed, is uh, developed, and is you know traded. Uh, there, there is joint value system, and it's when you access Russians, uh, I'm unfortunate to say they are too big to take care of our needs you know and we have different geopolitical needs so that's why i think first and utmost importance is that's why we do it and there are smaller uh, negative effects already ongoing for example due to the interconnected system of russia and Belarus, some uh, so-called loop flows electricity physical flows are transiting our countries and in some cases due to this transit priority physical interconnection we have uh, to reduce to make it smaller uh, electricity trade between our members between latvia estonia and Lithuania. how is that i mean uh, it's not good uh, we should not reduce for the third country needs our market needs you know because the prices go up in this case so such elements have to be as soon as possible uh, changed and I'm proud to say that is I think the most important because I remember Putin 10 years ago said uh, Baltics we are so we want to disconnect but it will cost them 2 billion yes it's true it's expensive because we disconnect systems which were 70 years heavily integrated but European partners help us the European partners support us and you know that uh, Connecting Europe Facility Fund allow us as Baltic states to receive 75% out of those two billions without any money back. It's a present for us from European members uh, uh, in a grant form. So that is fantastic news, which means that we will achieve this historical change without a uh, big impact to our uh, electricity prices. That is uh, also very important for our societies. So not much electricity price increase, maybe not at all. And this big important change towards finally becoming members of Europe. So, so I think those explanations should be enough for everybody. That is really relevant and viable, obviously. Uh, but. Um... I said you, you you mentioned several deadlines of, of the synchronization project or, or ongoing deadlines 
uh, maybe you can you know tell us more about how the project of synchronization is going how the project of construction of harmony link and and other you know system enhancements projects are, are currently you know at which stage are there how, how, how everything is proceeding uh, so yeah i try to underline that everything goes according to the schedule and that is very very ch challenging and it's very very sometimes hard to stay because you know Latvia does their part, Estonia does their part, Poland does their part, and we do our part. And uh, until now, there are no bad news. There are small delays of three months, you know, in one procurement or another, but, but Estonia already procured uh, synchronous condensers in Estonia. We are soon to be finalizing this. Harmony link procurement is also ongoing. Uh, Poland is doing the back-to-back um, -back stations procurement, we do a cable procurement. So those things are ongoing. They are very, very challenging because we have this challenging date of 2025, not later, end of it, but still, I mean, it's only four years to go. So, you know, sometimes we face the reality. The reality is that it's a very competitive market. Uh, the, 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 the cable producers or other producers, they, of course, uh see it globally they cannot produce more than uh, than they have physical capabilities so we have to consider this and uh, take into account but uh i think everything goes according to a plan and on top of that as i mentioned uh, uh this uh, big battery park in lithuania is uh, coming uh, by energy cells uh, company so which will of course contribute as well both to synchronization and renewables integration so uh, I, 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 I frankly i think some western countries should be pretty jealous towards us as a small electricity system having so many future uh, flexibility tools such as uh, synchronous condensers which is necessary for so-called inertia because uh, usually renewables do not generate inertia and you have a problem with uh, lots of renewables without inertia so you have to construct synchronous condensers and we are already doing this so we are enabling this uh, uh, big potential of renewables as well as batteries so i mean not many countries can be proudly saying that we have uh, so many uh, uh, modern tools in their uh, electricity systems and uh, in most what I've said, usually we are talking about European uh, funding uh, involved. It's not on the shoulders of our consumers, which is also very, very fantastic because we have big ambitious plans, but those are uh, in, uh, uh, realistically coordinated with uh, European support. So I think that is until now very, very good news. That is really great, especially in connection to the battery, you know, capacity expansion, you know, because this is obviously a crucial, crucial element. And, and the other technical elements you mentioned is uh, obviously the, the re renewable sources of energy, they, they you know, sun, sun shines only during daytime and uh, wind doesn't always blow. So the, we, we actually have uh, the, the kind of impact or, on today's electricity prices due to the fact that that the summer of this year was was not windy at all and uh, uh, way less wind uh, electricity has been produced as as expected so so this is actually a very practical impact on 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 on, on all the markets and, and all the uh, electricity if, systems if i can intervene robert you're right uh, i have an example i don't have it on screen but uh, if you can google it uh, september 23rd in germany uh, or in europe electricity prices were pretty high if i recall 150 euros average, uh, daily average. But in Germany at that day was something extraordinary. We never saw this uh, until now. Uh, during one day, the price in Germany was 160 euros in peak hours and zero, almost zero in certain hours. And the reason for that was uh, wind and solar. And uh, this is the best example of uh, how future might look like if we have enough uh, renewables. So those who say that, you know, it's the <laughs> renewables who cause this problem is absolutely opposite. Uh, renewables will solve this problem. But of course, we have to speed it up. Absolutely, absolutely. So talking about the future, as, as you mentioned, so how, how will the 
electricity transmission system and and all the electricity infrastructure look like in 2050 you know what's what's your vision uh, <laughs> fully uh, renewable in 2050 50 that's for sure uh, electrically very 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 uh, uh, heavily uh, integrated because uh, imagine all cars electrical uh, even for 2030 with prognosis in Lithuania only 200,000 electrical cars fleet which is a lot you know imagine mm -hmm. uh, what infrastructure in 2030 so in 2050 I think it will be uh, very very big changes and uh, what is the most I think important I think uh, the system will go from centralized to decentralized. I, I'm not saying that the backbones will disappear. The backbones of electricity will remain for exchange of high uh, capacities and amounts of electricity, but everything will be spread it into small so-called microgrids. That's for sure. And those microgrids will be, you know, maybe neighborhood with a uh, solar on roof with batteries uh, on, on, on the basement, you know, even in, uh, in a house like me, city center, uh, not private house, with flats, uh, uh, I think that is the future. And most important, consumer will be in the center. Consumer, daily consumer will be in the center from the perspective of making decisions. We know that uh, these uh, electricity counters will be there, the pricing will be, but it's already in one or two years. But in 2050, it will be, sometimes I make a joke, you know, electrical car will be your uh, wallet where you keep your money and electricity will be your new money. You can save it and you can trade it. So it will be about everything, about your laptop, battery. You, you might be even selling if you don't need it and you have a high price. You might sell, I don't know, or disconnect your fridge and due to that, receive a small benefit into your account because you don't use electricity when it's really needed. So consumer will be in the center and uh, flexibility of consumer will dictate the future. That's my vision. Essentially using of consumers for, for balancing purposes, essentially. Yes, yes, yes. All devices, including what I mentioned and of course new devices, yes. So. So that's that's really cool and uh, i mean we're all looking forward to that and i i know that first steps towards this these developments are already being taken you know that but bigger consumers are already having agreements or signing agreements with transmission system operators distribution system operators yes, for balancing uh, of, the, of the whole system via their usage i mean correct. when it's when it's peak and it's when it's not peak correct so, it's, already, so this is it's, corner. it's already happening today, but on a large scale, on the 3 million population of Lithuania, it will be there and I hope to still be there with you and to discuss it in 2050. Huh? <laughs> great, great, Litaurus. Very much looking forward to that. And by right. that, I would really like to thank you for our extremely interesting conversation today. And uh, Lutaros Varnavichus, a best expert in the area of grid development, strategy of grids. Uh, head of Lead Grid uh, Strategy uh, Division uh, in, in Lithuania. And uh, really, thank you very much for, for a very insightful presentation here today. Thanks, Thanks uh, to all of you and see you next time. Bye. Yes, and for all our viewers and, and, and visitors uh, on YouTube and, and other channels, I uh, invite you to subscribe to our channel, Energy Forum uh, on YouTube and energyforum.lt on uh, web. Uh, where you can always access uh, the uh, recordings of our event and all of our speakers. And also, you will see the schedule of ongoing uh, future meetings uh, and, and, and will be able to follow all our developments of the project. So, without uh, further ado, I would like to thank you for today. And uh, I invite you to join us next week uh, as usual. And please subscribe to Energy Forum on YouTube. Take care. Bye-bye.